In Cryo AM, we can basically learn what is the structure of living matter, what is the structure of cells, and we can go down to the level even of individual molecules. We're really talking about a whole new era of electron microscopy. Cryo-EM has become one of the most important methods of structural biology today. It makes many new targets accessible, like transmembrane proteins or whole cells, and it's still developing. We want to make a larger repertoire of molecules amenable to the structural analysis. We want to look at molecules in an even more complex environment, like the whole cell, where there are ten thousands of molecules. One of the most recent, most exciting techniques we are evolving is um, scanning transmission electron microscopy. One can observe proteins in their natural environment. Being able to look at the molecular structures inside of cells, this is really a dream uh, coming true to many uh, scientists. The first electron microscopes have been built about 100 years ago. But for a long time, their resolution was limited really by the quality of the lenses. Three colleagues of mine, they invented this completely new tool with which we can correct for this lens problem, these lens aberrations, and dig down into the atomic world of matter. But these instruments got really very expensive. And so my colleague Knut Oban and I decided to found this joint Ernst Ruska Center and to also found it as a national user facility. All of our colleagues from Germany, Europe and all over the world can have access to these very special instruments which we operate here. I was uh, trained as a biochemist actually. During my PhD I started to get involved in cryo-EM and at the time it was a, really a niche technique. A large focus of my studies has been how to interpret uh, the images in the best possible manner, how to retrieve the highest resolution details. I joined the Ernst Ruska Center in 2018 as a structural biologist. This has been a world-renowned center for material science electron microscopy. We have been extending this with machines suitable for investigating and imaging biological macromolecules. The Ernst Ruska Center offers the whole range of facilities that one needs to determine protein structures or investigate cells. We do negative stain electron microscopy for quick characterization um, and then we also do state-of-the-art high-resolution cryo-electron microscopy uh, using Talos Arctica and the Titan Cryos and most importantly we have many many um, computational facilities here. When things become really really complicated we have one of Europe's fastest supercomputers here uh, and um, in the future actually next year they will start building the first exascale computer in Europe. Here at the Ernst Ruska Center, we are putting a lot of emphasis on really on building a cryo-EM community. So we do this, of course, by training people, by having external uh, visitors to develop new approaches in order to solve um, particular problems. In my project, I'm mainly working with a protein from a cyanobacterium and this protein is responsible for the protection and the stabilization of inner membranes. As our protein is able to modify or remodel membranes, obviously we want to look on our protein together with membranes. We were able to observe that our protein PSPA has a lot of similarities to the rather common ESCOT3 proteins. We were able to prove that PSPA is a member of this escort free superfamily. Despite the progress, I think there are still many projects and molecules that at the moment in time we fail to resolve. Material science can provide us with methods um, that uh, really allow us to tease out this information. One of the uh, applications, for example, that we have been very interested in is are the scanning transmission electron microscopy methods. What you do is that you take a small probe and you take thousands of little spots of images and you merge them. One of the things that we have been highly successful with is the IDPC, the Integrated Differential Phase Contrast Method. For every individual spot, um, you deflect the beam according to an electric field. We then put them into the software programs that we had developed earlier and this, thereby we can really compute high-resolution uh, structures. 
Using this method, we were able to reveal uh, the helical structure of uh, tobacco mosaic uh, virus. We were able to achieve the final uh, resolution at 3.5 angstrom. This experiment gave us the knowledge that uh, STEM can be applied more uh, generally as a, an established method in structural biology. For the very first time, we have been able to push a STEM uh, technique to a near atomic resolution. It allows us to build atomic models and this is ultimately what we wish to do for all the molecules that uh, we are interested in. It's really a, one of the first examples where we apply a high-end uh, material science method to the life sciences and already have such an immediate success. This is really also the foundation of what the center is built on to make the applications in biology uh, more powerful.